Okay, so where are we? So next part we're gonna do is looking at the stomach. And I realized from the mouth part, I forgot one thing here is you also have to put, so this is, yes, the mouth does ingestion and deglutition. It also does mechanical digestion and it does chemical digestion. Remember of carbs. Okay, I forgot that because I, the next part is the stomach and, and the stomach is also gonna do some of these things too. The stomach I'm gonna write in a different color than red so that it doesn't get all sloppy. Okay, so what does the stomach do? The stomach has a couple of different functions. One function is the stomach is gonna do mechanical digestion. It does do chemical digestion. In this case, we're gonna start to break proteins. We also have some propulsion here. I may not may or may not have talked about this, but the propulsion here is usually called segmentation. If I didn't talk about it, just know propulsion. If I did talk about it, you don't have to you have to know segmentation. Okay. So let's look at the stomach anatomy and then we'll talk about all these different functions that it does. So here's our stomach. What we're gonna see is that our stomach is going to be composed of a couple of different parts. So you wanna remember that right, he, right about here is gonna be where that cardiac sphincter is because this is the esophagus. So the stomach is located on the left side of the abdomen underneath the diaphragm and underneath the liver. Um, it's going to run from, the, so it's gonna meet up with the esophagus as, at the cardiac sphincter. And it's going to attach to the duodenum, which is the first part of the small intestine at the pyloric sphincter. And the pyloric sphincter is probably about right there. Okay. The, this narrowing of the tube, that whole thing is the is the duodenum. The stomach has a couple of different like regions or parts. You should know that this is the cardiac region or the card. It's really called the cardia. Sometimes it's called cardiac. It's right underneath the cardiac sphincter and it's really close to like where the heart is. Then we have the fundus which is the rounded part that's gonna be on like more, more towards the left side. Then we have the body of the stomach and then this funnel shaped area, this is the pylorus. Okay, that part right there shouldn't be part of the pylorus. It really should be part of the, du the duodenum. We see we have lesser curvature and greater curvature. Okay, it's the lesser omentum that will attach right here so that you'll have a membrane attachment and that membrane attachment will go up to the to liver. And then here again, you have another membrane attachment that will go towards the transverse colon. I'm gonna write this in orange so you can read it a little bit better. This is the lesser omentum. And this is the greater omentum. Okay, greater omentum is that big kind of fatty layer that covers all the intestines. So internally, when we look inside, so, uh, you know, let me change my pyloric sphincter because my pyloric sphincter is right here. And in my picture, that's probably about maybe like right here-ish. So I could, I could change that a little bit.
And then, yeah, pylorus is all this funnel shaped part right there. It's kind of hard to figure out where the pyloric sphincter is without pushing on it or um, without seeing it cut open, especially on the human, on a, on a cat, it's a little easier. So here we see that area where there's a little bit more muscle. This is pyloric sphincter. Okay, and then again, we see that like boldy part right there. This is cardiac sphincter. Another thing you want to understand about the, the stomach is, I forgot one of my, uh, one of my functions here is temporary storage of food. Okay, so you can temporarily store bolus that comes in here. And basically you want to think about that as you want to give it, you want to give food and substances time to mechanically digest all the way and do some chemical digestion before it goes into the duodenum fully. So internally you have all these ridges, these bumps and ridges, these are called rugae or gastric rugae. And the gastric rugae have two jobs. One job is to help like with expansion of the stomach and um, collapse of the stomach. The other one is as the bolus enters here, it can bump up against all these ridges and that's where the mechanical digestion occurs. So they're also, also useful for mechanical digestion. And also for storage. Mostly for storage, because as the stomach expands, if you've eaten a lot, then the gastric rugae go away. And then if you don't, if you have an empty stomach, your stomach will kind of shrink a little bit and fold into the gastric rugae a little bit more. So that's how mechanical digestion is going to work. Let's think about some other things. I'm sorry, I was trying to think. Chemical digestion, propulsion. Okay. Another thing you want to understand about the stomach is the stomach has three smooth muscle layers. So you remember how the esophagus has two layers. The stomach has a third layer. So it has circular, it has longitudinal, and it's also going to have an oblique layer. It's the oblique layer that's gonna run at an angle. So like longitudinal goes like that way, circular goes that way and oblique. Oblique is gonna kind of go like sort of in that direction. So what the oblique is gonna do is as it contracts, it kind of pushes the stomach. Ooh, I'm trying to figure out where my hand placement is. It's gonna kind of push the stomach inward a little bit and that's gonna cause substances to go back up and back down and back up and back down. And this is going to help with mixing and churning, which is actually what segmentation is. Segmentation always does mixing. And that's part of the mechanical digestion is the mixing component. Okay. Now, the other thing is this part here is going to have a mucosa layer. And the mucosa layer itself, the mucosa layer is, is going to be made up of different cells that are gonna help us with some mechanical and chemical digestion. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna change something really quick. I'm just gonna pause the video and start back up again so that it doesn't take too much, too much of, the, of the time. Okay, I just moved where my gastric rugae are and I did that mostly so that I have enough room here to do my mucosa, okay? So the mucosa is an epithelial tissue layer that as you might have guessed, makes mucus, okay? The mucosa layer in the stomach is uh, adapted for basically for chemical digestion and for some mechanical digestion. The mucosa layer is going to look like this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this like this. It's gonna have these pits that come all the way down and kind of belly, belly out like that, creating a gland. So this is called my gastric pit. 
and I'm just going to make this higher up so I can label everything. I kind of didn't think about how big everything would be mucosa to give me enough room. So my mucosa is going to have cells. It's just going to have epithelial cells. Okay, on the other side too. So this is called the gastric pit. And this is the gastric gland. At the top here, you have mucous neck cells. They create mucus. So I'm gonna make my mucus green because I don't know why I think about it being green. So they, they produce mucus that actually goes above the mucosa layer. And the purpose of that is to protect the mucosa layer from the other products that some of these other cells are gonna create. So part of our gland, we're gonna have a couple of different types of cells and I'm just gonna make them like different colors and I'll like label them in different colors so we know what those different cells do. Um, let's make the red ones, okay? The red ones, the red ones are gonna be our, um, our parietal cells. They make hydrochloric acid. So hydrochloric acid is a pH of two. It's really super acidic. And the purpose of that is to help us with some mechanical digestion to help us like dissolve everything that would be coming into our stomach. So this is why the bolus enters and it becomes a creamy paste called chyme or kim. The blue cells are gonna be the chief cells. The chief cells are gonna make pepsinogen. Okay, when we put hydrochloric acid together with pepsinogen, it's gonna make pepsin. And I probably should do um, that, pepsinogen. But this, I didn't make this big enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write it up here. When hydrochloric acid plus pepsinogen come together, the product of these two is gonna be pepsin, okay? Then we're gonna have pepsin plus proteins. And the product of pepsin plus proteins is going to be smaller proteins. This is the function of the stomach primarily is to help you break down proteins. Okay, so you have a nice steak for dinner, a nice chicken breast or something like that. You have to break those really complicated proteins into smaller pieces. The stomach is gonna do this. It's primarily why food has to stay in the stomach for a considerable amount of time. One of the reasons why is because we wanna make sure that uh, proteins get broken down into smaller components before it enters into the duodenum. The purple one is going to be the introendocrine cell. And these make gastrin. Okay, gastrin feeds back to the brain to tell the stomach to make more hydrochloric acid when your stomach starts to fill. If you don't make enough hydrochloric acid, how are you going to break down everything into chyme? It's going to be a little bit more difficult, okay? Another thing that is going to happen here is you are going to have some peristalsis. Which is, remember, forward movement. And essentially, the idea is to move chyme towards the pyloric sphincter. Chyme will go through the pyloric sphincter and end up in the duodenum here. And then you close off the pyloric sphincter and everything gets moved back up into the stomach. And it'll mix a little bit more th through segmentation. You'll use that extra longitudinal, I'm sorry, that extra oblique layer to help you do that. So emptying the stomach, you push everything downwards towards the pyloric sphincter, relax the pyloric sphincter, about one ml of, of chyme enters the duodenum, you close off the pyloric sphincter, and then that 
causes everything to get pushed backwards and it helps it mix a little bit more. And then you push it forwards again, you mix a little bit more, you push it forwards again, you mix a little bit more. So that's the, that's the function of the stomach, okay? The next part we're gonna do is we're going to probably maybe look at the duodenum on here. Actually, I didn't, um, but, and, and some of our accessory organs.